Morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Here we'll, uh, we'll be talking about OpenStack networking. We're going to give a project update. Let's dive in. Uh, let's present ourselves. My name is Armando Miyacho, for those who don't know me. <laughs> I've been the Neutron PTL for the Mitaka, Newton, and Nokata release. And I'm Kevin Benton, and I'm the new PTL for Pike, and maybe more later. Yeah, on the one in go. everything in the mess, I guess. <laughs> All right, so this is the agenda we're going to go through today. Uh, we're going to have a quick overview uh, of the project, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive into how we govern the project. Uh, we're going to try and touch on a few technical points, and then Kevin will go over on, on the roadmap. And if we have time, we'll obviously uh, open up to questions. All right, so I couldn't have a presentation without this slide. As you can see, you know, the networking piece is a, a key component of the OpenStack ecosystem. And you know, we sit right there in the middle. So if things go bad, that's usually our fault. So uh, what about the project? Um, the project was started back in 2011 in the Diablo time frame. Uh, we've grew tremendously over the years, uh, up until the point where we have hundreds of contributors and um, across many releases. And um, it is Neutron nowadays is virtually like deployed everywhere in OpenStack uh, environments. Uh, uh, you know, more than nine out of 10 deployments do have Neutron in their you know, in their deployment architecture. So from, um, from an ab abstraction point of view, what is Neutron? Um, it's, it's an API, uh, a self-service API that, that allows um, cloud users to um, create networking uh, artifacts um, that may map, map onto different uh, implementation uh, backends. And the reason why we came about with that abstraction was because at the very beginning of the inception of the OpenStack project, some networking details were baked into OpenStack Nova itself. So some of you, if not all of you, may know about Nova networking. And that was an inflexible model where uh, you couldn't have uh, control over how the networking topology uh, was going to be like for uh, interconnecting uh, um, workloads. And also there was a very um, inflexible um, ability to provide uh, isolation and, and scale um, tenant environments over, um, you know, scale, scale those environments uh, adequately over time. Um, and that's where, you know, those are some of the answers that uh, Neutron, some of the questions that Neutron tries, tries to answer. Um, from a governance uh, standpoint, the project has evolved radically. Um, we were obviously at the very beginning a very small project, but then we grew um, to try in scope uh, to try to embrace more and more networking use cases. So um, from a man pro project man management standpoint, some of you may have heard of the Neutron Stadium was a concept that was brought in <coughs> by a PTL before me, uh, Kyle Messery, uh, at the time of the Big Tent. And again, from a, from a governance standpoint, um, this stadium is effectively a list of, uh, uh, a, a list of networking related projects that are overseen by the Neutron core team. Um, so, as a core team member, we are asked to members. We are asked to provide architectural guidance. Uh, we provide reviews over API proposals. Uh, we take care of release management of the projects. We address gate or infrastructure issues. And in return, sub project uh, since each sub project has its own uh, core team, they they pledge to um, provide good documentation across a num you know across the spectrum. You know, user, admin, and developers. Um, we obviously care about uh, testing. Um, we do things like stable branch management and so on and so forth. Um, but more importantly, we uh, aim at being a, a fully open source stack from the ground up. So again, Neutron projects are typically uh, projects that address technologies that you know are uh, openly accessible to everybody. And in a nutshell. These sub-projects follow the practices that are adopted by the Neutron Core. What well, it was known, you know, what well, was started as, as the, neutron, the Neutron Project and the Neutron Code Repository. So let's have a glance at uh, the Neutron sub-projects that we currently manage as a part of the Neutron Stadium. Uh, there are backend projects and there are API projects. And the difference is that backend projects typically end up implementing the APIs that are available in the Neutron Core and have, you know, uh, uh, have been. Um, 
introduced like back in back in uh, early early days of the project and then we, we have APIs uh, definitions and, and and respective implementations that have been brought in into the neutron larger ecosystem over time so we have backends like midnight open daylight OVN and backpipe versus APIs like VGP VPN dynamic crowding firewall as a service and service function chaining so let's go through uh, some of these. Uh, Midonet is the Midokura SDN solution. Uh, it is a very feature-rich backend. Uh, it, it does address uh, many use cases from L2 gateways to firewall, QoS, load balancing, and, 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 and top as a service. Um, I've uh, put a reference to release notes in, in the slides so that you can you know, uh, use it as a, uh, as a pointer to learn about more um, about these projects. Open Daylight um, was possibly the uh, first uh, as, you know, SDN controller implementation uh, for, for Neutron. And it has gone through a couple of iterations um, already uh, in order to make it like production grade. Uh, it does have features like L2 gateways, firewall, QoS, load balancing, and so on. Um, OVN is something that started uh, not too long ago. Uh, this is effectively a scope creep of the Open vSwitch community. Uh, we, as, as Neutron Project, um, provided OVS as one of the backends for the API alongside the Linux bridge. And we did so uh, using you know, a Python-based agent architecture um, where we are effectively were talking to, to the Open vSwitch demons uh, in order to provide virtual networking and things like that. And over time, you know, it came to the, the community, the Open vSwitch community came to the realization that Open vSwitch will actually grow, grow in, in scope and provide some of those art, uh, abstractions and, and building blocks within the Open vSwitch community itself. So that, that is what OVN is about. So from an integration standpoint into the Neutron um, system, uh, the integration is somewhat similar to what Open Daylight has done uh, in the form of an ML2 Mac driver. And one of, you know, one of the, the, the tenets at the inception of the project was, okay, we want to make sure, as an OVN community, we want to make sure that we may be able to scale and perform much better than the existing OVS implementation, of agent-based OVS implementation. Well, whether that's going to end, you know, end up being true over time, we'll have to see, because the project is still relatively new, but we have, the community has shown like, a promising start. Uh, they have features, there's still a gap like between the agent-based OVS implementation and OVN in terms of like, features, uh, but they do provide things like L2, L3 services as well as DHCP. They do provide a trunking, uh, in, in implementation of the trunking API uh, and things like uh, quality of service. And they also uh, do integrate with um, uh, various containers orchestrators like, like Kubernetes or Docker. Um, Backpipe was an initiative started by Orange Telecom um, and is effectively a way to provide tenant isolation by means of uh, BGP VPNs. Uh, and it is also, as you'll see in a second, a building block for providing um, BGP VPN, uh, an implementation for the BGP VPN API. And um, in fact, I mean, the BGP VPN project um, uses Backpipe to interconnect neutral networks uh, via um, one BGP based VPNs. Uh, but it also, uh, this project itself provides also like uh, implements a plugin based model where different uh, backends can come in and implement the API. And we have implementation available for Open Daylight, Open Contrail, and NewAge. Dynamic crowding came about as a way to overcome the limitations of static crowds. So, okay, it's all you know, uh, good and well that you can come up with your tenant uh, private, uh, private you know, uh, networks, and, um, but then what if you want to integrate with, uh, with the rest of your data center? And dynamic crowding came uh, to concept as in, you know, to, to, to realization in order to enable advertisement of these private, net private networks by means of uh, BGP. Uh, at this point in time, we have uh, Ryu uh, as, as one of the implementations. You'll see in a little bit uh, what we're working on in the future, uh, right now and in the future. So Firewall as a Service was, um, was conceived as a way to uh, provide a zero trust uh, security model opposed to security groups where the user comes in and says, okay, I want to open up these ports, but then Firewall as a Service comes in 
and it takes the administrator and operator standpoint and says, okay, I actually want to close these ports, right? And, you know, for, and I want to force the closure of these ports so that uh, it's basically a mechanism to override user will if, if, if you can, you know, um, if you allow me the, like, take the expression. So uh, it started with, uh, and with, an, with, with an initial iteration looking at how uh, these rules could be applied applied at the router level, but it evolved to be more port oriented and with, with the V2 version. And um, the V2 version actually is a little bit, it, it, it seems like more promising in the sense that it allows for, for, the, for the semantics of firewall, firewall service to be more consistently applied throughout the, the, tor, the portable, port type of typologies that are available in Newsroom. Um, we also, over time, worked on service function chaining. Uh, it is an API that allows the definition of uh, port chains. So basically, we take neutron ports, we can model a chain, and um, traffic, classified traffic uh, that matches the chain effectively can, goes, goes, um, get, gets redirected throughout the chain. And um, it has implementations for OBS, so when daylight, Onos and, and OVN. All right, so I'm gonna hand over to Kevin now that's gonna walk us through the roadmap. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go over a few of the bigger features that we have targeted for Pike that'll be visible to operators and users and then some of the community-wide goals that'll impact uh, operators. They won't really be as visible to users. Uh, the first big one that's been going on for a couple cycles now is adopting Oslo versioned objects inside of Neutron. This is kind of a lot of um, internal work to refactor how we pass around data structures and then how we will communicate with agents. And this will enable us to do rolling upgrades as well as uh, push notifications because it provides a mechanism by which one version of Neutron server can communicate with agents from the version behind it and you can have multiple versions of Neutron servers running at the same time. So uh, starting with the Okada release, right, we now support um, upgrading the database schema while there's Okada servers running and you can bring online, uh, or sorry, while there's Newton servers running, you can bring online Okada servers and then slowly phase out the Newton servers so you can have zero downtime upgrades with the uh, Neutron server API. Uh, multiple port bindings is um, something that won't really be visible directly to users, but it affects the communications between the Neutron and Nova uh, components. So when Nova goes to migrate a VM from one host to another host, right now it has this limitation where it has to land on a host that has the same type of networking topology. So they both have to be using OVS on both sides. The, the interface type, if you will, can't change at all. And that means you can't do things like migrate from um, OVS to an SRLV based uh, system or you can't migrate from OVS to OVN. So it blocks kind of a lot of um, upgrade options for providers that want to change from one networking uh, uh, technology to another. Another example we have here where this is really going to help is we recently added a pure OVS based firewall that has much better performance than the Linux uh, IP tables hybrid based one for the OVS backend, but until we have this multiple port bindings, there won't be a way for an operator to adopt the new firewall type and migrate uh, VMs to it. Uh, security group logging is, for now, is starting out as a purely operator based API. It will let operators define um, criteria to match to say, I, I want to log all. Uh, packets or log, log all instances where a packet has reached a, fire, a security group rule and has been dropped or accepted. Um, so this is very experimental, or experimental early on. The initial implementation will be only targeting the OVS uh, uh, reference implementation that we have now. Um, and it'll be operator facing, so it won't be available to users, but it will allow uh, operators to log security events for sensitive devices. Uh, Quota usage API, right now the quota API that we have is very limited. It just lets operators set quotas for tenants and then tenants can view their own quota limits. But they can't see how many, you know, how, how 
close they are to hitting the limit on those quotas. So we're just, there's going to be a new details endpoint on the quota API where either users can look at their own usage or operators can go in and ask, you know, how many, how many ports is this, uh, this tenant using or how many networks is this tenant using without having to do full port listings and all that kind of stuff so they can see how close users are getting to hitting their quota limits. Um, our RBAC rules for domains. So right now we have a RBAC API inside of Neutron that allows you to share share networks with other tenants or, or other projects and um, allow them to access them as external networks or as shared networks directly with their VMs. It also can be used to share um, QoS rules between projects. And this is just going to be expanded to also support uh, Keystone domains. So you'll be able to share networks or QoS objects with entire Keystone domains. Diagnostics is another brand new API that we're trying to get in um, very early version of this cycle. Um, do you know if it's operator only or will users be able to use it? We'll try to address the end user use case. Yeah, yeah. So the, the basic idea is that you can query this diagnostics API and it'll return a bunch of information that's uh, using a plugin architecture in the back end that will examine the state of agents if it's an agent based system um, and let you know, hey, there's the reason your instance isn't getting an IP address, for example, is because maybe the DHP agent is dead or um, none of your agents are responding. So it'll help troubleshooting when you have difficulty figuring out why, you know, why is my floating IP not working or why can't I reach my instance? You'll be able to use the diagnostics API and it'll return back some error codes and say, hey, there's something wrong with the infrastructure or maybe, hey, you just have um, all of your, you don't have any security group rules that are allowing traffic. So you need to go in and add some if you want, if you expect things to work. Uh, QoS ingress rule support. This one's pretty straightforward. The initial version of QoS that was released a couple cycles ago now, right, um, only had uh, limits on egress bandwidth. So you could only limit how much, you, you could only put bandwidth limits on the traffic that was coming out of the instances. So this is just adding ingress support as well, so you can limit how much traffic can go into instances and do bi-directional limits. Uh, the community goals, these are project or community-wide goals set by the technical community, uh, the technical committee. Um, Python 3 support, Neutron, I, I think, has Python 3 support. We have one, one test that's running all the unit tests with it, and we're working on getting a Tempest test and maybe one our functional test or full stack test set up. So this one should be effectively done. There could be some edge cases we're missing right now. Um, that, we'll, that we'll find during the cycle as we enable more testing of it. Uh, WSGI support is a little further behind, but it's still on target, I think, to be released this cycle. Um, WSGI support is just to allow uh, the Neutron API server to be run in Apache WSGI or another web server WSGI rather than as an individual process with its own uh, socket stuff. And if you want more information on the goals and the reasoning for them, you can go to this URL that's here. So Neutron Lib is a, a, a library that we started two cycles ago now. Yeah, I think a little longer than that. OK, yeah. <laughs> and we, we've been trying to provide a stable interface. So we have new, the Neutron Core repo, and then we have all these drivers and um, uh, service plugins, all those uh, sub-projects that need to have constants that are specific to Neutron, all kinds of stuff. And right now, they're importing from Neutron Core directly, and they end up uh, breaking whenever we make some kind of refactor, that kind of thing. So we came up with Neutron Lib to make a stable interface that where it's safe to import, and there'll be a really long deprecation cycle if we need to get rid of something. So um, that way, drivers don't have to constantly uh, watch what's going on in master and worry about things breaking if they're just importing from Neutron Lib. So the, the goal for Pike is to pick a few of the sub-projects that we have inside the, the Neutron Stadium and make sure they're not importing anything from Neutron at all. Make sure we provide everything uh, necessary for them to function just inside of Neutron Lib itself. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty much like a housekeeping task. Yeah. Make sure that we provide um, a clean and stable interface between the various projects that can integrate into the core Neutron platform. Yeah. So if you're a driver developer or you service plugin developer, this. This, is, this is more relevant to you. 
So kind of the, the broad themes for what we're focusing on in Pike um, is scalability, manageability with the uh, version upgrades, you know, operator kind of focus features. Um, modularity, the, the big thing with Neutron Lib to make sure we're not constantly breaking sub projects and putting out fires that way. Um, interoperability, kind of focused on that a, a little bit with the, uh, the multiple port binding stuff that's going on between Nova and Neutron. Um, security is kind of minor. There's the logging API. There isn't much changing along those lines. There's firewall as a service inside that project, but nothing in the core, uh, core Neutron changes there. And user experience, the troubleshooting API will help with that a little bit too. Yeah, and also, I mean, we keep on investing time and energy in the OpenStack client. Yes. Where uh, right now you could use the OpenStack client pretty much to target any like core command that targets the L2, L3 uh, operations. So uh, we've deprecated the Neutron client as of uh, Okata, I think. Mm -hmm. And we won't be obviously getting rid of it anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, if you are, you know, users out there, you, you should start considering using the OpenStack client and provide us feedback because there may be like still gaps that we may have overlooked. And then within the sub projects, there's quite a quite a bit of activity going on that's kind of very independent from uh, what's happening in the Neutron Core projects. Inside of MitaNet, they're working on Ironic uh, integration, IPv6 container integration, um, Open Daylight. Scalability, any other big features on open daylight that you know? No, I, I think they got to a, a decent, like, mature point, and they're are going over incremental iterations. Um, I think the big, the biggest thing that they wanted to work on um, were targeting L3, um, right. L3 enhancements. And then um, OVN, they're working on the M ML2 OVS integration. Um, they're the big goal is to get to parity with the current uh, OVS reference implementation that we have, and then so they can start suggesting people move from our entry OVS implementation over to OVN, and uh, that's the one of the dependencies there is having a migration path that like the, the port binding stuff work in the Neutron Core. Um, so yeah, seamlessly moving over workload that's running on the existing. Or the, the data plane as, as implemented by the agent-based OVS architecture to, to OVN. Uh, Bagpipe, BGP VPN, just more uh, features for fine grain control over routing. Do you have any more details on yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, this and technology? if you guys have more, to, for more questions, I think we have a few experts in the room that can help us out. Okay. I see Paul over there. So. Uh, firewall as a service. The, the big thing that's happening inside of Firewall as a Service is the development of the V2 implementation, the port-based one right now. The, the, router, the router one, the router-based fire, Firewall as a Service V1 isn't going to receive any major updates or fixes, so right now all the um, effort is being focused on the V2 API and the implementation for OVS. Um, service function chaining, do you want to give a quick update? Do yeah, you? well, and also, you know, let's keep dynamic routing. I mean, we've been working oh, on providing, sorry. yeah, um, different implementation backends. So uh, there was a team at some point that was working on the Quagga driver, and also there was an initiative to uh, refactor the code base so that it would be a little bit more uh, agent-less friendly, because right now there are some baked-in concepts that are tied into the agent-based framework in order to provide uh, dynamic routing services. Uh, service function chaining, um, the, the team was, was focused on NSH and provide higher level abstractions in order to uh, build uh, service chains and also address more use cases that would even target potentially bare metal deployments. Uh, I mean, truth to be told, I mean, during the past few months, obviously, the, the, we've experienced a bit of a setback with a number of contributors uh, moving on to, to greener pastures. Let's let's say, and so, you know, we're trying to kind of huddle up and figure out how we can, can uh, keep on pushing the roadmap forward with, uh, you know, with limited, more limited resources. So some of these goals may end up being dropping from the roadmap. I mean, we're, still, we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, VPN as a service, uh, last, during the last cycle, it kind of fell, fell out of status with the Neutron Stadium because there, there isn't anything particularly uh, wrong with the project. It's not critically broken or flawed or anything like that. 
and there's actually quite a few operators uh, that I know are using it. We just need um, basic maintainers to volunteer to do bug triage, review the simple patches, you know, changing import paths, that kind of thing. And so we have a, a session dedicated to this that's actually right, right after this one in uh, MR 104. So if you're interested in VPN as a service, um, come down to that one and we're going to kind of try to get some volunteers from some operators that won't take too much time because I don't think there's any big feature requests right now. No. It's a project that just yeah. kind of I mean, works. The reason why it ended up being dropped from the Neutron Radar is because, again, there was an active development. However, you know, when it comes to OpenStack development, uh, projects need to be, you know, uh, continuously nurtured. There are Git issues that must be addressed. There are release issues that must be addressed. Uh, there is documentation that must be provided and so on and so forth. And without an active maintainer, obviously, we can't guarantee, we can't vouch for the quality of the project any longer. And that's why kind of got, we signaled uh, these, this change in status of the project by taking it out of the neutron governance. But again, if there are folks out there who are you know, generally interested in, uh, in helping the project uh, going forward, especially like for instance, addressing OpenStack community goals like Python v3 compliance and things mm. like that, then you know we'd be more than happy to work with them in order to you know bring bring the the, the project within the new, you know the, the neutron management ecosystem. Um, it's it's too early to have any kind of uh, picture of what's going to be happening in Queens. So the the pipeline is still open for proposals uh, for Queens definitely, and even for Pike for for very small changes. So. Um, File a request for enhancement if you have any uh, features that you want to see in Queens or even in Pike. We discussed in the drivers meeting to prioritize things. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to briefly mention what the process looks like. Uh, there, to you, do that. you yeah, you file you file a bug inside of you go to uh, Launchpad oh. and file a bug against Neutron and just add the uh, RFE tag and put RFE up in your uh, the title of your bug and. Um, put just a very basic use case. Don't talk about how we should yeah. implement don't it. Don't focus on implementation details. Just one paragraph of, uh, I want this feature. You know, here's, here's how a user's going to use it. Here's how it's going to help an operator, that type of thing. And um, submit it. And then we discuss it, discuss these RFEs weekly in the Neutron Drivers meeting. And if we need more details, we'll ask for more details on the bug, that kind of thing. And if you're more than happy to help with the implementation, the better. Yes. Yeah. Um, so some things that have come up just in like this, the recent meetings is like uh, cell support. Um, so we have a, a similar uh, scaling solution that new, uh, Nova has, um, distributed SNAT, support for more network types, multiple IPAM drivers loaded at the same time, and talking to, you know, kind of like an ML2 type thing where you can have multiple IPAM drivers. And for one network, you get IP addresses from one system, and another network talks to a different one. Uh, another one that's come up pretty recently is uh, SSH host key retrieval. So Neutron can um, ask ask an instance directly, kind of over a trusted network path, uh, what's what's the SSH host key. So this would be retrievable via an API. So when people are initially connecting to an instance, they have a secure path to get the uh, host key. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you do, come up to the microphone so we can. Yeah, we've got hear. plenty of time. I think yeah. we've got like 30 minutes to open up to questions. So okay. please. Thank you us. for your work. Uh, there is a very uh, long standing request for Neutron to influence uh, Nova scheduling uh, decisions. For example, if you have two physical networks available on different hosts yeah. and tenant want to use specific network, we should be able to say Nova use this host, not any other. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now every operator do this with some crazy magic around flavors, aggregates, and so on. And the simple way for Neutron to say, no, this node couldn't serve this networking. Please do not schedule here. And I, as far as I remember, it was outstanding request, Havana, maybe even earlier. And I see no any traces of Nova scheduling in. So the, the uh, routed networks was very similar to this, where we have a single network that's made up of multiple segments, and they're all on different uh, physical networks. And so this, uh, Miguel, actually standing, sitting right next to you there, worked on some scheduling changes uh, inside of Nova. Do you want to give a quick update and uh, maybe before? So, okay. So for routed networks, we are able right now to actually influence send the information that Nova needs to take the, the scheduling decision based on the segments that 
uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of are part of, of a router network. What the Nova team is working in this cycle is using that information to actually, to take that information actually in the scheduling uh, okay. uh, process. And, and to piggyback on, my, uh, on Miguel's uh, response, uh, there is a mechanism available in Nova that has been available for a long time, which is scheduling filters. So you must realize that from a neutron standpoint, we don't know, you know, the project doesn't know about the hosts. Obviously, like if you look at the compute hosts. So there is some awareness of, you know, what you're running on the host in terms of like agents and how their net, you know, how their networking wiring looks like. But obviously, uh, you, can, you can then use a scheduling filter that is in like a Nova concept that could be potentially used in order to influence the scheduling decision at the time you're, uh, you're trying to place a VM on a, on, on a computer host. I don't know if that is something that you're looking at or you had considered. Yes, then I have a other question. Mm -hmm. If I want to write my own schedule, we do this all the time, where I can get neutron information when I r writing Nova filter? Uh -huh. There is no the, neutron. Uh, there is, you, can, you can hit the neutron API no, to do that. Try and answer. Oh, for, Thank for, you. For, for better or worse, um, AT&T Labs research um, started a separate project called Valet, which includes a Nova filter scheduler and a heat lifecycle plugin. And what the Valet project does is it parses the entire heat template before any other system sees it and makes decisions. And then through the Nova filter scheduler, uh, Nova filter scheduler plugin is able to do very much what you're saying. Uh, and some of the features that may or may not exist at this point in time are things like bandwidth guarantees. So one, one, of the, one of the feature goal, one of the original objectives of the Valet project was to be able to support bandwidth reservation and be mm -hmm. able to say, this particular hypervisor has only two 10 gig NICs in it. Therefore, it cannot support a collection of VMs that need an aggregate of 30 gigabits of committed throughput. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not part of Neutron. It was it's a, as a separate project, but that's something you you might want to right. look into because it was it was designed for that purpose. And then you know to answer your question like with two points is a I apologize if your you know request got abandoned without any type of feedback, but you should have at least seen a feedback of along those lines. Is that you know there are building blocks that you can leverage in order to integrate this in you know this business logic into your system. And if there are gaps that you still perceive, that you still observe from, like, from the net neutron standpoint, we'd be happy to, to address them. In fact, there was a request a, a while ago to expose an API that gives us, to give, to give the tenant uh, hints about IP consumptions, um, where actually these folks were writing a filter that was um, looking at how many IPs uh, were consumed like in a subnet and then influence the placement, the VM placement based on how many IPs were available. And we basically ended up providing this API endpoint via Neutron that was inquired by the scheduler filter at the time the VM placement was taking place, was, was happening. So again, if you still have gaps of those sorts, we'd be happy to look yeah. at them. But as far as the building blocks are concerned, we can, you can potentially do that today. We, we, can pro we can provide information that can be used by the scheduler, but we can't actually influence the scheduler directly inside of it. And the scheduler itself has access to, to the Neutron client in order to go and, and you know, invoke the, the Neutron API. I just, I just wanted to add something to the ODL, the networking ODL mm. piece. Um, I'm not actually that involved with the networking ODL um, subproject, but there's a lot going on here um, at the summit and especially tomorrow on something called Nirvana Stack, which is ODL plus VPP. And so um, VPP is Vector Packet Processor. Um, it's part of the FDIO organization. And what we hopefully will see is all of the, all of the various Neutron APIs that currently work with ODL programming open vSwitch, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see moving towards par feature parity with VPP as an alternate data plane and VPP is, I mean, competition is good, I think. There, there are claims that VPP is much faster than Open vSwitch. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see, I have yet to see confirmed lab evidence that I believe right. on, on, on that. But 
hypothetically, it's supposed to be much faster and more adaptable towards programming into various advanced smart so, so let me stop you there. Are there any questions about this? Because this is a time about questions, so I had an advertisement. <laughs> no, well, I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, that's, good point. That should be a major progress yeah. in the ODL. Absolutely, yeah. good point. And that, you know, obviously, that's give opportunity to the audience to come up to the mic and ask a little bit uh, more about, you know, what things like COVID in the air. Oh, all right, there you go. Sorry, there is another iterational problem, uh, which is IPv4 only. Uh, when we have few external networks, um, in our installation we have no floating IPs, no routers, uh, external networks that are shared with tenants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that we can't have too large networks because it's too much junk floating around. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is no way for all existing applications to give some non uh, tri simple way to say any network. Give me any network. Uh, Nova can do this when there is one network. Right, here. right, okay. Um, that, so that might be like... Give me a network of an answer. Yes, there's... So, yeah, um, I don't know if you've heard of um, something known as get me a network as a feature that was introduced, get, get me a network. Uh, it sounds like something interesting, but... Right, so yeah, you would want to check out a video that was put up online yesterday because we had the presentation about oh. this. It's a feature that was introduced in Mitaka mm -hmm. for Neutron and completed on the Nova side in, in Newton. And so today, you could, you know, if you get hand on your hands on Newton uh, code base, you can give this the try. It's, it's a feature that allows you to provision, to assign networks to tenants in a seamless fashion. So when you you as a user are spinning up a VM, you don't have to specify what network you want. The, the system is smart enough to figure that out. Well, as, but as it stands right now, it creates a router and... I was uh, going to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it has some certain limitations. In this summit, we prevent, presented the feature. Uh, we're discussing this afternoon at 5.30. So I know it's late, but we welcome you there to come and bring us feedback as to how we can expand this feature. Okay. Yeah, because one of the alternate implementations for Get Me a Network could be to select from a pool of networks and return Yeah, actually, I have that patch. I worked that in last oh, night. OK. So, so the other thing that I wanted to say is that based on your description, Get Me a Network might be one of the solutions. But another thing that you might consider is routed networks. Because essentially, what <laughs> you broke it. What I understood is that you have a huge network. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. We and got like. They run out of IPs. Okay. Okay. Very right. Good. It looks like we have what you need, so just come and talk to us. So we have a Get Me Network available to our users, but nobody uses it because there's no um, Horizon integration. I don't know if that's on the roadmap. Or... Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, kudos to you for <laughs> running Newton. Uh, but no, we don't. Uh, yeah, we, we don't have anything in the works. Um, it should be just a matter of like providing a checkbox in Horizon. So the implementation should be relatively trivial. We should try and, and get IT Hero to work on it. Yes. He but should. yeah, it's, do provide us that type of feedback on, uh, on the Etherpad uh, that targets that forum discussion that I was mentioning earlier, like this afternoon at 5.30. But yeah, at the moment, it's just CLI integration. It just seems to me that the type of user or the type yeah. of you know, use case that's targeted would kind of make sense for... Yeah, but you only do one, one thing at, at yeah, any sure. given release, so we go, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but point taken, very, very well, good point. Any more questions? We've got two more minutes. If not, thanks for coming. Still early in the morning, caffeine, as mm -hmm. in, thank you.